Hey guys, welcome to my multifamily dwelling service load calc. This is the optional method. If you want to see the standard method, please check out my other video. I'll have a link for it at the end and also in the description below. This is for the 2023 code cycle. I also have a series on 2020 if you want to check that out. But they're pretty similar. There weren't too many changes done uh, from 2020 to 2023. In fact, there haven't been that many changes in this particular uh, multifamily optional method for several cycles. So this is also the crash course series. So this is going to be one that I go quickly through several examples just to kind of give you an idea of what you might run into out there in the field or maybe on a test. If you want a deeper dive into it, I do have a deep dive series and that's where I go really deep into each detail of the calculation and show you every little nuance of how you get each bit of info and data and, and how you apply it every code article and, and so forth. So check that out if you want something deeper. Okay, let's get rolling. Here's a table that I made up and this is gonna make it really easy for you to see the whole problem in one place. I'm just gonna take a minute here to explain how this works and then we're gonna get into the examples afterward and work through and, and, and fill these out as we go. Okay, this is broken into two columns, main columns as you see, or maybe two sections you might call it. You got all your per unit loads on the left side, and then you're going to combine everything and apply some extra factors on the right side to come up with your total. We're going to start with a square footage for each unit. Then we're going to add small appliance circuits. You know, there's two minimum that are required. Again, see my deep dive for the reasons why on these things. We're going to do our laundry if it applies. Now, some multifamily dwellings don't have laundry provisions in each unit, and so we would not put a value here if that was the case. But if there is laundry, then we have to put the value here. Then we get onto our fixed appliances and we're going to take each of those at nameplate and we're just going to list them out and give their values. Then we're going to go to our range and cooking at nameplate and also our dryer at nameplate. Now remember with the optional method, you do not use the range table 220.55 for this method. You only use that for the standard and same with the dryer. You do not use 220.54 table for the dryers here on the optional method, only for the standard. So that, that kind of screws some people up. They forget to do that sometimes. So you only use the nameplate for the optional method. So range nameplate, dryer nameplate. We have the water heater nameplate. Any extra motors, take those at nameplate. And then we take the largest of our heating or cooling at the nameplate, plug it in there. Then we're going to add all those values together and get our total per unit VA. We're going to slide that up to this column and we're going to multiply by the number of units and we're going to come up with a total VA for all units. Now if you have dissimilar units, in other words, if some of your units are, you know, have different specs, maybe they're different sizes or they have different uh, appliances in them, then you would treat this the same way, only you would just take anything that's similar, like all the similar units, you would take those as their own chunk and you would plug all those in here. And then you do the same for the other set of units that were a little different. Like let's say you had a style A and a style B and a style C unit in your complex or in your building. Then you would take all the A's, run it through here and come up with a total. Then you take all your B's, run it through here, come up with a total. Same with your C's. And then you would add the A's, B's and C's together before you apply a demand factor, which is the next step. So that's what you do. Once you have a total here, you would go to table 220.84B and it'll tell you for the number of units you have, you take a certain percentage as your demand factor. Multiply that and you get your total demand load. Once that's done, you would take all of your house loads, come up with your total, and you would add it to this number and that would give you your total VA. Now, we're not gonna have any house loads in these examples. I have another video that covers house loads and how to figure those up, how to calculate those. And basically, for the most part, you're just taking those with the standard method any house loads, and then you'll come up with a total and you'd add it into this demand load. But again, that's in another video. So check that out if you're interested. Once you have the total VA, you're just going to divide by your voltage and you're going to come up with your amps. Once you have your amps, that is your service size. And then you're going to use that to find out what your OCPD size is, your conduit size, your conductor size, all that stuff. We can figure that out once we have this number, but this amperage number is the key that we're looking for um, to start with. Okay, here's our first example. Number one, we have a triplex building and here's all the data for it. I'm not gonna read this off because we're gonna see it's on the next page as well. 
There are no households on the service. It is a 120-240 volt single phase service. So we're going to try to find the service load in amps. All right, here we go. Like I said, over here is all of our data for this unit or for this triplex. So now we just start plugging in our information. Each unit is 1600 square foot. So we're going to start over here, square foot per unit. 1600 times three is 4,800. We're going to add our small appliance circuits. Now we weren't told we have small appliance circuits over here, but we have to by code add these two circuits in at a minimum. And they're each 1500 Watts or VA. So we get 3000 VA for our small appliances. Same thing with our laundry. If we have laundry provisions, then we have to add one circuit minimum at 1500. Now we're told we have a 1300 watt clothes washer over here, but we have to put 1500 minimum regardless. All right, then we move on to our fixed appliances. We have those listed here, dishwasher, microwave disposal with their values. We go on to the range, 7,800 watt range, dryer, 4,700 watt dryer, water heaters, 4,500 watts. Let's see right there. We don't have any extra motors. The largest of a heat and AC. So we have 3,600 watt heat pump and we have 9.5 kW furnace. So obviously the furnace is bigger. We're gonna put 9,500 there. Now we just add all these up together. We get 39,800 VA per unit. Slide that number up here. Multiply by the number of units, which is three, because it's a triplex. We get 119,400 VA, and that's our total. Now we go to table 220.84B and find out that for three units, we get a 45% demand factor we can apply. Multiply 45% by 119,400 and we get 53,730 for our total demand load. Now we would add our house loads if we had any, but we do not have any house loads. So our total VA is 53,730. Divide by our voltage, which is 240, we get 224 amps. Now we can size our feeders and our conduit and so forth. Okay, example number two, we have an eight unit condominium comp uh, multiplex. Uh, everything else is pretty similar. We have a few different loads here and we'll go on. Okay, eight unit condominium. Each unit is 725 square feet. So we multiply by three, we get 2175. Add our small appliances, 3000. Don't forget that step. That's a crucial step that a lot of people will forget. Laundry, 1500. It's tells us we do have a clothes washer. Fixed appliances, we have dishwasher disposal micro hood right there. We have a range nameplate, dryer nameplate, water heater nameplate. No extra motors, largest of heater AC, we've got a 6,500 watt furnace and two 1,200 watt AC units. So our furnace is larger. Add them all up, 31,975 per unit. Slide it up here, multiply by eight, we get 255,800 VA total. Now we go to table 220.84B and find out that for eight units, we have a 43% demand factor, which gives us 109,994 VA for our total demand load. No house loads, so that is our total VA. Divide by our voltage, 240, and we get 458 amps. Example number three, we have a 20 unit multiplex and we'll move right along. 20 units, we, each unit is 923 square feet times three, 2769 at our small appliances, 3000 at our laundry, 1500. Fixed appliances at nameplate, pretty much the same ones, but we have a jetted tub now this time. We've got a range, got our dryer, got our water heater all at nameplate no motors, heat and AC, we have a 10,000 watt furnace and 6,000 watt heat pump. So we take the furnace, add them all together, 41,369 per unit times 20, because it's a 20 unit multiplex, and we get 827,380 total VA. Table 220.84B tells us we can multiply by 38% for our demand factor, and we get 314,404 VA for our demand load. No house loads, so that's our total, and we divide by our voltage, again, 
240 volts. That gives us 1,310 amps for our service. Okay, last one. Example number four, we have a 60 unit high rise studio apartment building. So each of these units has different loads in it. And so there's gonna be some differences here that are in stark contrast to what we've already gone over. And that's why I wanna throw something like this in here so you guys can see what kind of a difference it makes when you change up, um, like if you're doing gas instead of electric, for example, for your cooking and heating. And so that's what this has. Each unit is really small, 333 square feet. You know, these are just studio apartments, single room in a bathroom. All cooking and heating appliances are gas. Okay, so that's a critical change to this calculation. There are no laundry provisions on site, so that's different. Uh, no house loads again. The service is now a 12283 phase, and all distribution feeders after the service are single phase, so all your panels are single phase, but uh, it's three phase service. And so we're going to calculate the total service load in amps. Okay, so first thing is we have a red flag here. There's a monkey wrench that goes thrown into our problem here. And that is because we cannot use the optional method demand factors for this calculation. And the reason is we have to have electric cooking equipment as per 220.84A2. Without it, we have to use a standard method only. And you can see my video in the description below, I have a link. So let's take a look at what 220.84 says. It says, it shall be permissible to calculate the load of a feeder or service that supplies three or more dwelling units of a multifamily dwelling in accordance with Table 220.84b, that's the one we've been using for our demand factors. Instead of part three of this article, which is the standard method, if all of the conditions are met. So our problem is we do not meet condition number two. It says each dwelling unit is equipped with electric cooking equipment. Well, our cooking equipment is gas. So we fail to meet that qualification there, that condition. So we cannot use the optional method for our problem. However, there is an exception they give us. It says when the calculated load for multifamily dwellings without electric cooking in part three of this article exceeds that calculated under part four for the identical load plus electric cooking based on 8K dub per unit, the lesser of the two loads shall be permitted to be used. Okay, now all that is saying is that there are two things we need to do here. And we're going to compare the two calculations we make. First of all, we're going to take the, the problem just as it is, and we're going to apply part three of this article, which is a standard method, to our example. We're going to calculate it out and see what total we get. Then we're going to take part four, which is our optional method, and apply that to the same example, only we're going to add one 8K dub cooking appliance per unit. So we're going to imagine, we're going to pretend that we have a cooking appliance in there at 8KW, and then we're going to calculate it out and see what our total comes up to. And then we're going to compare the two, and we're going to take the lesser of the two. So it's really pretty simple. It's just you got to do two calculations now to find out which one's the, the lower of the two. And just in case you're wondering, uh, number one condition was no dwelling unit is supplied by more than one feeder, which we don't. It's just one feeder supplying it. That's pretty typical. It's pretty rare that you would have more than one feeder supplying it. And then the third one was each dwelling unit is equipped with electric space heating or air conditioning or both. Now we don't have any heating that's electric, it's all gas, but we do have an electric AC unit. So that keeps us within this condition. We do meet this condition number three. So that's not something that's gonna keep us out of here. Otherwise, if we didn't, if everything was gas, then we couldn't use it at all. We, we would not be able to use this. We would just have to go to the standard method and use that only. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do what we need to, and we're going to take both calculations here. Okay, example number 4a. So I made a, an extra example here. It's the same problem, the same example. Everything's identical, except I added a an 8,000 watt range, just a pretend range, and just added it to our calculation. And so we're just going to calculate it out like normal and see what we get. We have a 60 unit apartment building, 333 square feet for each unit times three, 999. Add our small appliances, 3000. We don't have laundry this time, remember? No laundry provision, so zero for there. Fixed appliances, disposal micro hood. We take our range and nameplate, 
we don't have a dryer, so zero there. We don't have a water heater, that's also gas. Now I didn't say that over here in the example, but that's assumed because if you're heating and your cooking is all gas, your water heater is gonna be gas. You know, that's, it'd be very rare to have your water heater be the only electric appliance that uses, you know, that for heating. Um, we got our cooking, our heating, and our dryer all is gas. So the presumption is water heater's gas too. We don't have any extra motors, largest of the heater AC. We don't have any heat, so our AC unit is all we have, 1,200 for that. So we're just gonna add up these values together. We have 15,999 VA per unit. That's incredibly small, but these are tiny units. And being all mostly gas, uh, that, that's why we have such a small value. Slide it up here, multiply by 60. We get our total VA for all units, 959,940. Okay, now we apply our demand factor from table 220.84b. 24% is what they allow. That knocks us down to 230,386 VA. No house loads, so that is our total. We divide by our voltage, but since it's three phase, we gotta first multiply our voltage by the square root of three. 1.732, then we divide it into 230,386 VA and we come up with 640 amps. And that is our first total. Now we have to compare that to the standard method. Now I've already done this in another calc video and here it is. This is a standard method that we came up with. You can see this on the other video for the standard method. Check that out. So we can compare it here. So with the standard method, we come up with 831 amps. And then we compare that to 640 amps that we get with our optional method. Even though we included the 8,000 watt range in the optional method, it's still considerably smaller number than the standard method. And that's pretty typical. Now, when you get to really small ones, like maybe a triplex and maybe a small units, um, the standard method would actually be smaller than the optional once you add the range. But when you get up, I don't know what the magic number is, but it kind of depends, it's a sliding scale. But once you get above probably, I don't know, seven, six, seven units, I think um, the optional is almost always gonna be smaller. Okay, and I briefly mentioned this before, but I just wanted to say it one more time. This chart, the way it's set up right here is for a multifamily dwelling building where all the units are identical. They're identical size, identical specs, same number of appliances, the same size of appliances and all that. In an ideal scenario, that's what you would have. But for buildings with dissimilar specs for each unit, you have to calculate the first portion for each unit style. So like I said, if you have A, B and C style units, you do this for A and then you do this for B and then C and you come up with the total for each, then you would add them together and then you would go ahead and apply the demand factor to that total and then go on with your calculation. So I just wanna reiterate that just to make that a little more clear um, for those of you who may have dissimilar unit specs for your multifamily dwelling. Okay, hey, thanks a lot for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a like. And if you haven't subscribed, that would be great if you subscribe, it really helps me out a lot. I do have, like I said, a 2020 series and I'm working through a 2023 series right now. I've got all kinds of different calcs out there. Um, just check out my channel to find those and uh, spread the word. If you know people looking for help on this kind of thing, I know I, I wish I had had something like this when I was starting out uh, 27 years ago. Um, it would have been really cool to be able to go to this, but YouTube wasn't much back then. So anyway, appreciate your guys' help and I will see you next time.